Testing one, two, three. All right. Okay, the stream should be live now, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, if you're joining the Monday live show this evening, um, Jason Vong is not here as my co-host. It's going to be a solo fly through. Um, but I will have show notes posted in the comments as well as in the description after the show is over. Hopefully the quality is not too potato. But right now we're in the pre-show mode. The show is supposed to start in about 15 minutes or so. So just hang tight, especially those of you who are here live. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Let's see what's going on, everybody. Um, I'm the Brown. I'm glad we have audio. I'm really glad because we always deal with potato quality. I was testing so many spots to see if I can get better reception for my internet today. So let me know if the if the audio is good. I'm happy. If it looks like potato, I sincerely apologize. Um, looks like there's an NCAA national championship going on. Tag the shooters telling me. <laughs> Uh, Mick Petrak is saying, is this an April Fool's? Uh, no, we are going to, we're going to be talking about the posts that were made about some of these cameras. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, there's no Sony Alpha 6700 official announcement yet, but, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. There is some rumors about it, which we'll talk about later. Uh, let's see here. Jeffrey Chu from Canada. What's going on, man? Uh I'm the Brown, just trying, just trying to get that broadcast voice going. It just happens. Uh, Dozer, what's up, man? Uh, Virgil Hart, am I seeing that right? All the way from Okinawa, Japan. Is it already the next day over there? Uh, let's see here. Fahuch Maxwell, what's up, man? How you doing? Bengal Tiger from Connecticut. Nice. Hello, Connecticut. Belfast. Craig, what's up, man? Uh, I don't know if any of you, uh, again, are uh, those of you that are joining just now, uh, I think I haven't done a solo live show in over a year. I think it's been over a year. We actually started doing, um, myself and Jason Vong, we've been doing like the official Monday Live podcast for almost uh, over a year already. It's actually been over a year. We've been trying to keep it up every week. So uh, for those of you that have been following since since the early days before when I was still doing pod uh, like the live shows on my own, those were those was a long time ago. So but really glad. Uh, Fathom Rocker, what's up from Orange County, California? What's up, man? I went to school there uh, in the Orange County area. Green Bay, Wisconsin. Man, everybody's just telling where we're at. Uh, Liquid from Puerto Rico. What's up, man? Discovery Duo from Florida. Ice Entertainment, Stu45 in London. <laughs> Appreciate you being here. Tag the shooter trying to sell off his 6300 and 6500, trying to get something sold. Let's see. Oh, Virgil, they hurt. They hurt. Okay, cool. Uh, Eli from North Carolina. What's up, man? Uh, <laughs> Tag the shooter saying, is he Jason Vong or just Danny, man? <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, happens, man. It happens, especially when we did that live show when we were in Vegas. Um, we like wore the same colored shirt. It wasn't it wasn't something we had originally planned to do. It just happened. Um, so that made it worse. It, it really made it worse. So for those of you wondering right now where Jason Vong is, he is in. Let's pull it up right here. He just had a post on his Instagram account. He's in Mexico. It says San Miguel. Um, he's testing out this lucky lucky kid here he's he's testing out the sony a7 III. so he's doing like this um this thing with sammy's camera in la as well as sony so it's a little partnership thing he's doing there so hopefully he has a good time and stays safe out there so but yeah that's jason bong where he's at if you're wondering where he is and again we're still in pre-show mode so if you are wondering what the hell in the world is happening there will be show notes down below after the show if you're watching this after the fact. All right. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Dozer says, I'm not going to lie. I've confused the both of you sometimes. Wow, man. Wow. Um, Virgil's like, it's all good. It's a pseudonym anyway. But yeah, I'm in the future, so to speak. Okay. I'll try to remember that. Uh, Asante says, um, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
Um, SRM Media. Well, Alex Sandoval's in the house. What's up, man? Glad you can join the show. Uh, he definitely, Alex recommended the idea for talking about some of the April Fool's discussion. So that's why uh, that's why it's on the plate today. Uh, <laughs> Fathom Rocker's like, why didn't Jason Vong take me as his plus one? I don't know. I think he just had a limit. And I'm, I get really busy, so um, it's really hard for me to just like up and up do something else because I, I work. So it's that, it's that struggle I have to deal with. Jim Wynn, 42. Hi, from San Diego. What's up? Need to go down to San Diego maybe over the summer. We'll see. JZMF Gaming, spring break went by too fast. Yeah, it did. School starts tomorrow. <laughs> Darren Rose, good morning from Melbourne. Hey, what's going on? It's it's late. It's uh, in the evening over here where I'm at right now. <laughs> Tag the shooter's like, no, you got a real job too. I'm like, Jason. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to chime in in the chat. We'll see. Um, Jean Louis Imperial, I thought you weren't going to show uh, with April Fool's banner. <laughs> I need to, man. I, you know, people get really upset because um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the, the specs that people were giving as far as the cameras were concerned. I really wish they didn't go too far on the specs because they said something like 10K on the uh, one of the cameras. I'm like, I, I, would, I would really like if the specs were a little more, just a little more realistic to trick people. But I know it really pissed people off if I just had a post that just said Sony A6700 and and it's not April first anymore, so I don't, I don't. It doesn't validate for um, April Fool's, so I didn't want to upset too many people with that. Let's see, Pedro Baltasar says he went from went to Ella from Riverside. Darren says he's midday here. Should probably do some work at some point. Uh, Tag shooter is asking, when do I get the A seven three shipment? When is that going to come in? Um, mine is still, I'm assuming still scheduled for April 10th. April 10th is still sort of the scheduled time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Also folks, if you want to throw in questions right now, uh, you're more than welcome to, I'll try to tackle them. Obviously it's only one person here, but there's still the chat that can kind of chime in and help you out too. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, send them some my way. Darren already got his A7 III. Damn it, Darren. <laughs> Alex Sandoval is trying to get a 24105, but it's back ordered everywhere, I would imagine. Um, let's see. Joel Serrano is asking, is it worth to sell the Sony A6500 with my Sigma 16 millimeter, um, 18105, and 50 millimeter for the A7 III? So, Joel, my only question is, are you going to have a lens after you sell all that stuff? So... I, I mean, the A7 III is going to be nice, but are you going to have a lens? Like, what's what's the first lens you want to get? <laughs> uh, you know, Pedro, I think uh, Pedro's asking, you know, is it going to ship out on the 10th? I, I think it is. Um, I think they're observing pass. I ordered mine from B&H Photo, so I don't know if that's going to affect it because I think they're observing Passover or uh, the holidays that they're observing. Uh, it might slow down the shipment process. I, I, hopefully it doesn't. We'll see. Tiger Shooter is saying, so I'm going to have the A7 III, the A7R III, and the A9, and my three Alpha 6300s, my Alpha 6500, my A6000, my A5100, my RX100, Mark five. Yes, I'm going to have a lot of Sony cameras. So, um, but we'll probably start start selling those off soon. We'll see. Ice Entertainment says keep hearing overheating issues with the Sony A7 III. You know what's interesting? We can talk about that today. Um, that was a topic I. I oh crap! I hope I'm not getting potato quality right now. But it was something I kind of didn't talk too much about. Uh, while on Jason's podcast on on his day. So if you want me to talk more about the A7 III overheating problem and my actual thoughts about the A7 III and potential problems it's going to have when people get it, um, I can definitely throw it into the show if you want to hear my my honest opinions about it and um, what I really think about that camera. Uh, Joel Serrano says, uh, 
following up with this other question, because he was looking to sell his APS-C equipment and get the A7 III, he said his lens would be the 85. I mean, if that's a lens that you need, I mean, I, I don't see why not. Um, do you really need the A7 III? If, it, if a lot of your work is low light and you're doing a lot of portraits, I think it's a great way to go. Let's see. Jay San says it's going to be all right. Ordered the A67. What? Wait, what? <laughs> I saw A6700 and I had to stop there. Um, so Darren Rose is asking, so my question, I got the A7 III. It's my first Sony camera. I got the 55 1.4. Is that the 55 1.4 or the 55 1.8? Zeiss. So now wondering what my next lens should be. Any recommendations? I shoot portraits. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the 85 for portraits. That's that's me, unless you're waiting for something like a, a 135 or a Sigma 105. I don't know what your, um, you know, kind of ranges that you want to work with, but um, that's what I would go. <laughs> Alex D. Dufo Dudowski says, review the Rokinon 85 1.4. Is there a, do they have an autofocus version already for that? You know, I'm going to, once I get back into reviewing and, and um, looking at lenses, when I have some more time as the year, my, the, the work year comes to an end. Again, for those who don't know, I'm a, I'm a high school teacher. So we have summer in about two months. Uh, I'll have a little bit more free time to sort of figure out all these reviews and things I want to work on over that time frame. Again, folks, we are still on the pre-show. We got a few more minutes until the show starts. So again, uh, show notes will be in the description slash comments after the show's over. Uh, let's see here. Tan Trong is asking, should I go with the Sony Prime 518 or the 35 F1.8 or go with manual focus glass? I'm not sure what body you have. Um, I'm assuming APS-C. I think the 35 1.8 is a good way to go or the Sigma, uh, the Sigma 30 1.4, I think on APS-C is a really good one, a good choice. Uh, Ellie Malay is asking, do an RX 10 review. I absolutely love mine. I mean, I did rent it out. Um, I did, I, I took a rental from pro support. Well, not a rental from pro support, but I, I did a loaner through pro support for the RX 10. I really enjoyed it. It was actually a really great camera. Um, really good for sports with, with daytime stuff. But when it came to evening, it really did struggle, but I was very happy with it. I mean, when I have a chance, I, 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 I might, I might look back into it. Uh, Darren's asking 85 G master or the other one. If portraits is your bread and butter, everyone always says, go for the best one. It's out there, the 1.4. Um, but in my honest opinion, I would just get the 85 1.8, save the money. You, you got, yeah, save the money by lighting. Uh, depending, it depends on what you have already. I mean, if I, most folks want, won't see a difference between the 85 1.8 and the 85 1.4, the, all the photography folks, we probably might be able to discern it, but everybody else would not even know unless you told them. So I would say save the money uh, and, and invest in, in lighting or something if that's the situation you're in. Would, uh, Pedro's asking, would you recommend getting the Sigma 18 to 31, uh, 35 1.8 into MC11 or the Zeiss 18, 1835 F4? What the heck, there's a Zeiss. What's the Zeiss 18 to 35? Or, or unless you're talking, of, yeah, I don't know what that one is. You know, Pedro, um, I really don't know if Sigma is on the on the horizon to release a native e-mount for the Sigma 18 to 35. I don't know how long you have to wait. If it's urgent, I, I don't like the compatibility. Uh, unless you're going to use the 18 to 35 manually for video, it's okay for video, um, like with the A6300 or A6500, but um, but if a native version comes out soon, it might be worth waiting a little bit, but it just depends what you need. As far as the lens, I'm not sure what you mean by the 18 or 35 at four size. Terry J Photography is confirming Best Buy sales rep said that we would receive our A7 III on the release date. That's Best Buy. Sucks for me, I, I B and H probably. Um, Vir Virgil Hearts asking, do you think Sigma will manage to redesign their 1835 1.8 for the E mount in a way that has uh, that has it work for a full frame Sony camera? 
I don't think so. I think um, I just don't think they're they're gonna do that. I I I don't. I don't see it happening. Mitch Rico is asking, what do I teach? I teach like graphic design, photography, and video. I'm also in charge of yearbook, which uh, that's been taking a huge amount of my time recently. Um, and so that's why I've just, it's, I really have trouble like multitasking with large projects at any given time. And then I also do this other program at school where I have students who are gonna be competing uh, for digital cinema. Um, so I, I got my hat, like I got myself like spread thin in different areas. And so it's, it, I really don't find a lot of time that I can do for like the YouTube stuff that I do because I prioritize the stuff that I'm doing at the school and as well as for my students. So uh, that's why the video side of things has really been kind of on the, on the back burner. Well, folks, I just want to let you know, it is 7.01 PM Pacific standard time. Thank you for joining myself at the Monday live show. I am Danny, AKA that one camera guy. As you know, Jason Vong is not here. If you're wondering that right now, Jason Vong is actually in Mexico. Um, here's a post I will try to zoom in here. I, it probably looks like a complete blur of potatoes, but um, Jason Vong is out. He is looking and using the A7 III. He's doing some sort of thing between um, with Sammy's camera and Sony, so he's doing some pretty cool stuff. So he's getting to test out the a7 III. So um, I'm pretty sure he'll share a lot about what's going on uh, in a video or in next week's live stream. So if, again, if you're wondering what the hell in the world happened, that's what's that's what's going on. As usual with our Monday live show, again, uh, show notes will be down below uh, after the show is over. So hang tight for that if you're watching this after the fact. Uh, we are going to go ahead and start with our topic. Our favorite segment, I guess, is hashtag new gear. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, if you'd like me to read out some of your uh, new purchases. Maybe you got a nice tax refund and you went ahead and splurged on something. Uh, whether you got it this week, last week, or something you are hoping to buy very, very soon. So just go ahead and post down below hashtag new gear and let me know what you picked up. Now, if you have a question and you really just want to ask it and you want to like jump up the actual chat, then uh, you can do a uh, super chat, but it's not required. You don't have to do it. But if you really want to just, dang it, Michael Mistro beat me to it. <laughs> Michael said, bam. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate the $10 super chat. Yeah, that's how you do the super chat. Just click on the little symbol down there, drop a comment or a question. I will address it as soon as it pops up. And I always do appreciate the super chats. I, I really do. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with hashtag new gear. Um, but let me go ahead and briefly talk about some of the news topics I'm gonna go over with you today. We are gonna cover some of the April Fools ones that were that recently popped up related to Sony Alpha. Um, there was an A, a Sony A8S, the Alpha 6700, and there was this uh, FE 20 millimeter to 50 millimeter F2 lens. We'll take a look at some of those and some of the specs as well as your thoughts on how ridiculous or how not ridiculous some of those specs actually are. Uh, Sony, uh, Sony Alpha Rumors also posted an SR5. Speaking of just uh, just April Fool's things, they actually did post an SR5 saying that there is a redesign potentially on a flagship APS-C camera. So apparently APS-C is not dead yet, but we'll we'll get to that. I'm glad, I'm glad, sort of, sort of glad about that. I don't know if you saw there was actually, uh, so for those of you who own an A9 and purchased it, MSRP, my heart goes out to all of you as well as myself, but uh, there was also a post about a reconditioned Sony A9 going for 2000 basically $3,000 off the Amazon website as well as an A7 R3. Well, I'll chime in a little bit on that and um, ouch, after a year, the price drop on the Sony A9. There was also a post, uh, we'll briefly mention it, as far as what dominant eye do you use when you take photographs? Uh, we've talked about it before on the live show, but would love to know about that. There's like an article I just want to briefly mention because I also I deal with the situation because of my dominant eye and kind of blocking my view in the EBF, but Sony sort of helped with that. And finally, we might finally get some competition from Canon and Nikon. As you know, I was a prior Canon shooter, um, part of their uh, part of their cohort, but it looks like Nikon and Canon are now going to be looking into putting out a full frame mirrorless camera very, very soon. So. That's our news topics, but we're doing hashtag new gear first. So let me know in the comments below. So I did finally pick some stuff up. 
Um, I haven't picked everything up, but there was an eBay deal that went down. I know Alex Sandoval hit me up on the DMs telling me there was some deals going on with eBay, but I was also given the opportunity for some eBay bucks. So uh, I went ahead and picked this up. It's a 10 terabyte. Let me see if it focuses or not. There you go. Uh, it's a 10 terabyte recertified Iron Wolf hard drive. So I picked up five of these. So I got five of these total. Um, I was going to get more, but I think five was, was enough. So I picked up five of those. And then I, um, so I got them for a pretty good price. I, I, I hope it was a good price. And I'm also looking to pick this thing up here. Let me go ahead and pull it up. It's a QNAP. Now, Jason actually reviewed one of these, but it was not the Thunderbolt version. But I'm looking at picking up one of these. It's a um, it's four bay NAS, enclo um, NAS enclosure, but it has Thunderbolt. It has it also has the ability to expand with M.2, so you can speed it up. Don't know how well that's going to work out. It does have 10 gigabit Ethernet. If I end up ever having that as an option as far as transfer speeds, um, they do say the transfer speeds are not too bad on this. It's going to be much faster probably than my Drobo that I currently have. Well, I have actually two Drobos. So I'm looking at that right now because I actually want to be able to edit off of this NAS enclosure. So I'm hoping the speeds are good um, with the with the, the hard drives and just being able to work off of that straight onto my computer. So that's what I'm looking at as far as new gear. Um, but right now that is, that is it. Now, if you also have some sort of NAS enclosure, what do you got? Do you have a Drobo? Well, Drobos aren't really a NAS, they're a D, they're DAS, directly attached storage, or um, Synology, QNAP, what are you using if you are doing that? But that's the new gear that I, uh, I picked up. So let's go ahead and check the comments. Let's see here. Um, Damon Hart, hashtag new gear, the Sony 85 1.8. Really nice choice. Hopefully I'm talking about the Sony one. Uh, Ivan Liang, Sigma 31.4, new gear, good choice there. Uh, Harold, new gear, got the A7 Mark III and the 16 to 35 F4. I'm really liking my 16 to 35 F4. Hopefully you are too. Um, he, Harold's also mentioned there's a 10% off EDU discount with B&H. I did see that it's about a two hundred dollar price difference here in the in the in the U.S. Well, I, I guess whatever it is, but the, there's an EDU discount. It's two hundred dollars off. So if you are an educator or a student, you can get the A7 Mark III for about eighteen hundred dollars, which is a pretty nice save. I'm probably gonna have to contact them and get that discount going. David also looks like he's in the house. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fathom Rocker New Gear Flashpoint Explore with X Pro Flash and Glow Parapop 38 inch, nine feet flash point auto stand. Let's see here, the Panda Photographer New Gear, newer F100 seven inch IPS field monitor, Ice Entertainment New Gear, manual lens, Sam Yang 50 millimeter F1.2, getting to know. Nice. Is that is that one for full frame or is that for APS-C? I get the impression that that's for APS-C. Let's see here. Richard Olivier, New Gear Glow 31 by 31 softbox. Tag the Shooter. Yeah, Tag the Shooter posted a video about the Sony multi-battery kit, which charges four batteries and powers accessories. Alex Sandoval, New Gear Ona or ONA. I, I don't even know how to say that. Let me know. Uh, the Union Street camera messenger bag, very fashionable. Alex, was that the one from eBay that you were, <laughs> that you got off the deal? <laughs> Let's see here. The H Zone New Gear finally pre-ordered the A7 Mark III with delivery on April 10th. For anyone in Canada looking for the A7 III, uh, for an, uh, an A7 III Best Buy will still deliver as early as April 10th. Let's see here. Photographers in the house. What's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Uh, Bob Nolan, New Gear small rig cage for the A7R2 with battery grip. Nice. Um, like the grip works in it as well as the Sony one. Sweet. <laughs> Tag the shooter says he's got the terrible Drobo. We were talking about earlier that I picked up some uh, 10 terabyte drives uh, for storage. To be perfectly honest, man, I've 
I have two Drobos not I haven't had any issues with them. So I, it's a mixed bag. I, there's some I hear good things and I hear bad things. So fortunately, I haven't had any uh, any issues yet. Damon Hart's saying it's weird without Jason. I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, Jason, you gear peak design messenger bag for the a seven three. Also, can we get it already? I know, right? The folks on the other side of the world already got their a seven mark threes, but uh, I'm sure we can wait a little bit longer. I'm getting to the point where I don't know if I care anymore. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, it's like, I'm very anxious to get the a seven three start using it, start testing it out putting it through its paces, but then I'm like, well, everyone's already got their A7 III. You know, what do I do? <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of this um, very difficult situation trying to figure this out. Uh, Jason, for gala event speakers, is the 7200 F4 as good as the 2.8 as far as sharpness and autofocus speed? Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. I, I would I would give slightly better sharpness to the G uh, the G Master. But the 7200 F4 is pretty good already. It's just a, it's, the F4 is really there. The 2.8 is really there to give you that extra stop of light if you really need that extra stop of light. David Oster uses the pro, the promised Thunderbird drives. Um, let's see here. You know, next week, actually, I we'll see what happens. I'll reach out to some of you guys next week uh, as far as the show. Jason, I don't know. There might be a conflict because Jason might will probably be at NAB. I had to. I was thinking about going to NAB, but I had to cancel on that just because I've been busy with work at school. So we'll see what ends up happening. But um, but yeah, I might reach out there. Jim Win forty two actually just bought a Synology not uh, NAS. Also, the Sigma 16 millimeter with 1.4, which looks awesome for astrophotography. Sweet. Um, let's see. Ice Entertainment, old gear, three by Lacy, Lacy, five big, need to upgrade. Uh, Jean Louis Imperial, again, referring to the NAS that they're using, he's using an old DS1511 Plus with five by three terabyte drives from like half a decade ago. That's awesome that it's still working. You're not having too many problems with it. Um, QA, has it been confirmed that the a7 III has a battery charger? I think David Oster's in the house. It, did they did it include one in the box? Um, for some reason, that was weird because I know the a7 R3 had a battery charger. Michael Mistro, new gear, Zakudo, Gradical I Micro OLED EV. Nice. Is that where the, the, with your Fuji lens and everything to support all that? Uh, let's see. David Oster's loving his a7 III. That's a good sign. <laughs> Darren Rose is chiming in. The folks on the other side of the world usually have to wait. And that's what I figured. I was like, man, we got, we got like the a9. We got like the a7 R3. Um, I, I felt that that was the case. Let's see here. Uh, Dustin Dilworth, new gear motion module for my Etichrome uh, slider one and an A7S. Let's see, no charger included. So people are saying there's no charger included with the A7 III. That is weird. Why on earth wouldn't they do that? <laughs> Alex Sandoval says, I feel like you're going to pick up the A7 III for the first two weeks, and then you're going to slowly go back to the R3, and the A7 III is going to collect dust. LOL, you can't go away from those 42 megapixels. Um, it's tough. It is It is really tough. It is really tough. Um, but like I said, after I, I used A7 III, my brother uh, is going to take the camera. So um, he's cool with me getting the camera, testing it out, doing some tests and so forth. But um, that's kind of what he, he wants. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. Tag a shooter, new gear, A7R3, had a charger with a small damn plug. What the hell? <laughs> um, Terry J saying, David O did a great video on the A7R3. So definitely check that out. 
Okay, folks, we are going to go ahead and just steamroll through some of the talking points for the news this evening and uh, definitely chime in when you uh, feel the need to. So we're going to go over some of the posts that were made about uh, during April 1st. I don't know about you, but I was I was on YouTube watching some tech videos and I knew it was like April 1st, but some, some, some of the stuff they posted seemed believable until I started thinking about it. I know it was at MKBHD. He did like this video on like the Google Home, but he was talking about the Bigsby, like Vision or Bigsby Home from Samsung. And for a second, I actually believed it, but yeah, I completely forgot it was like April Fool's. So I stopped watching videos on April 1st just because I didn't want to, I didn't really trust too many things. But we're going to go ahead and cover some of these posts here. Again, if you're wondering why Jason Vaughn's gone, he is in Mexico right now and um, he's doing some pretty awesome stuff. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into some topics here. Our first one has to do with some of these April Fool's posts. So uh, a lot of these posts were reposted through Sony Alpha Rumors, and uh, Andrea posted them on his Instagram page as well. So we're just going to – I don't even have any idea if you can see this thing behind me. This is like my new setup that I tried to do. I tried running OBS with my internet connection, and it was worse. So – I, I had to just stick with using using the setup. It just works faster, I guess, for me. But um, there was this post from, I think, Wei, Weibo, I think is the right term. It's a Chinese website. They posted this image of a 20 millimeter, 50 millimeter F2 G Master lens. It's really weird. They labeled it G, G, and M. But if you take a look at this lens, it has such a massive front element on there, very bulbous. And then what's really interesting was the color scheme that they used. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it's a bit red right here where they have the G series logo on there. But a 20 millimeter, 50 millimeter F2 is, uh, it's really insane. I don't know. I mean, it, the first thing I would say, just it's not believable, obviously just seeing that right off the bat. But if there is a particular zoom lens that you wanna see for Sony, what what is it if it's faster than 2.8? But a 20 to 50 millimeter just didn't seem like it was going to happen. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the next one here. Uh, this post was very interesting. It popped up on Sony Alpha Rumors as well. Again, this is actually from, I want to give credit, uh, I think from an individual named Dr Drew Garassi. That's where it was originally posted on their, I think, Facebook page. But they made this like, they went all out on this elaborate post about a Sony Alpha 8 S obviously for their Sony, um, obviously either a successor to the a seven or just kind of like a sidestep from that one. But I'm going to go ahead and read some of the information that was posted on there on this, uh, April fool's post. Again, this is not real for those of you just that jumped in right now. Um, they said it's sees darkness. It turns to light. It's a new dual shift, ultra high sensitive resolution sensor capable of light sensitivity all the way up to 3.2 million ISO. I think the A7S series only does about 400,000, so that'd be crazy. It does 10K video, and it does 12K stills, what this camera is capable of, basically. And I really like this touch that they put here. It, they say, light is recorded uh, to dual XMOR Z sensors at once, and then process using the new Bion's Alpha processor, achieving speeds like never before, Thanks to the integrated, and for, for those of you who are into computers, M.2 one terabyte PCIe SSD. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. And then also as far as uh, dynamic range, 20 stops of dynamic range versus what they show there with the Sony A7S II. Pretty funny stuff there. Um, cinematic quality video for the masses. They go over, you can, it's the first um, one that you can record in RAW internally. And... Um, this was a really big giveaway here too. This is Sony's first mirrorless camera to utilize dual UHS-3 SD card slots. The funny thing here is if you know Sony, they're not going to give you dual UHS-3 slots. If they even existed at this time, they probably would give you a UHS-1 and a UHS-3. But, um, but apparently it can record 10K raw video at speeds of up to 24 all the way to 60P and then 4K raw at up to 480 frames per second. I don't even know if a red cinema camera can record up to 480 frames per second. And I like this little touch he added uh, that thanks to the newly designed ventless internal liquid cooling system, the sensor is able to run at temperatures exceeding 120 degrees Celsius with uninterrupted performance. 
because obviously this would be a very, very hot camera to use. Uh, so here's the specs, 97 megapixels, six frames per second, ISO 3.2 million, MSRP of 10.2, well, 10,000 US dollars. So anybody interested in a Sony Alpha 8S? I'm just curious. And how crazy is this? I, my honest opinion is what could they have changed to make it more believable if this camera really did exist? But um, I think that was the whole point with these um, April Fool's jokes here. So uh, we'll chime in into the chat and then talk about the last April Fool's uh, com uh, post, which was the Alpha 6700 here. Let's see. Neil Pel Peltex says, don't miss Jason, you're good. <laughs> Ouch. Um, Damon Hart says, it's just jokes. Um, Michael Mistro says, all that and no ND filter iPad. I think that's a big one. I mean, I don't think anyone needs 10K right now anyway. I think even just really good 4K. So if I was to, if this was an actual camera, if we were talking about an A9S, um, I would say potentially, or even for the A7S III, I mean, what are you looking for? I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of just give us, get the 4K 60P, improve the rolling shutter, right? So it's not as predominant in the camera if they can eliminate it completely. Michael chimed in with the ND, fill, uh, the built-in NDs. That's a really big one. If you can have those, that'd be really nice. Decent um, full HD slow motion. Uh, that'd be good too. If they did something like 6K, 24P on a more high end camera, maybe. But again, I, I just think that they would just really need um, 4K, but better recording options, better bit rate options and choices to make it a much better uh, option for people. But yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's a Sony Alpha 8S. Yeah, 10,000 bucks. I mean, if even if you were in the chat right now, would you even get this if it had all of this stuff in here? But I mean, if you're a cinematographer, I would say this would just blow your mind. But yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I'd pass on that. Let's see here. Um, I had not, Eli, I have not seen Jared Poland's video. No. All right, and the final post is the Sony Alpha 6700, again, posted via Sony Alpha Rumors. And this was, I think, created by Chris Hunter. Um, let's take a look here. So uh, this was really more a focused on video with the Sony Alpha 6700. Um, going on with the video specs and features, 6K at 60 frames per second. UHD at 120 FPS, full HD at 240 frames per second. And a big one here is the 10 bit 422 internal that a lot of um, cinematographers really want to be able to work with their files more. Um, but this was just kind of a teaser for an Alpha 6700 camera. Again, some of the points that I would stress and uh, my predictions for the 6700 is I think it is going to have the 4K 60p, but 6K is definitely not, uh, not at the works there. So. But yeah, this one actually seemed believable at first when I saw this posted because, um, I, you know, it looked pretty simple, just Sony Alpha 6700. But then as soon as you see this 6K at 60 FPS, I was like, well, that's not going to happen. Sony's not going to do that. So, but yeah, there you go, guys. I don't know. Was there any other ones out there that you guys liked that I'm not even talking about right now? Dave Sincere's finally in the house. Dave Sincere says, no more crop sensors for me. <laughs> oh, Eli says, it. Jared's video was about shooting film with a film camera. All right, we're going to go ahead and steamroll through to our next news topic. We'll just knock these out of the way. Uh, this post, again, via Sony Opera rumors uh, about the flagship Sony APS-C camera. So it's looking like there is still going to be some APS-C cameras down Sony's pipeline. So APS-C isn't dead yet. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this here. So again, um, let's take a look at the details here. This was not really more on the specs, but rather sort of the actual design of the actual camera. Uh, it looks like they're going to shift the movie record button towards the front of the camera. 
I kind of prefer the back, but if you take a look over here, if you can even see it, they're going to go ahead and place that button right there uh, for the movie. Again, these are all just still rumors, but SR5 seems pretty, um, hopefully, uh, on the ball there. There's going to be a Modal lock on the actual top here, if you can see. I don't know. Are are you a, are you guys a fan of the mode dial lock on like the A7 R2, the A7 series cameras? I've never accidentally bumped the mode the mode dial in any way to change it on a Sony camera. So I don't know if it's necessary, but maybe the lock is one of those push ones where you push it, you have the option to lock it, or it rotates. And uh, there's going to be an additional custom button placed here on one of the mode dials, which is really nice. And then the inclusion of a joystick on the actual camera. I'm guessing these are all still mock-ups, but um, that'd be really nice. I still think they need to drop in maybe a potential uh, fully articulating screen, but we'll see if we ever get that. Something tells me we won't, but I really hope they do for the Alpha 6700. Uh, my ideal 6700, um, I, I really think like if it's gonna be a flagship camera, is just to put the put the Sony Alpha 6700 or whatever this flagship APC is going to be inside of a full frame body. That's the way I see it right now. <laughs> Damon Hart says this one was fake. I thought maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is. Neil Patrick, uh, Neil Peltak says, I came in late. Is there any rumors of A7 III shipping early in the US? Tired of watching the rest of the world enjoying it already. Oh, man, that's what it's going to be like for a while. Um, Chris Barr, our SR6 rumors guy, says, the next camera will be an A6. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, shoot. The reason why I, I go along with the Alpha 6700 just going inside of a full-frame body is because you get all the additional benefits of the, of the larger body on full-frame. So... You'll, you'll get the, the larger battery option because of the bigger frame. You'll get, and just in general, a more ergonomic body. I, I don't feel like it would add too much more to the overall weight and package of it, but I'm still assuming it would still offer their other APS-C cameras, like their A6500 uh, or so, if you still want a small form factor. But I think it'd be interesting to try out an APS-C camera in a full-frame body. And it would also help with heating as well, because you'll have a bigger body to deal with with overheating. Casper71124 says the next camera is going to be an A-mount camera. Casper, don't jinx it. <laughs> don't jinx it. <laughs> I think it could be an A77 Mark III, right? Alpha 77 Mark III. Who knows? It could be. All right, let's see here. All right, our next one I'm going to briefly talk about. Um, again, posted on, on Alpha Rumors there. Uh, there was a post that uh, reconditioned Sony A9 was going for $2,999 on Amazon, and an A7R3 was going for $2,799 US. Prices are seriously dropping on the bodies, on the mirrorless bodies. Um, obviously, the lens prices are really holding their value, which is pretty typical. I mean, that was the same for, for DSLRs as well. But these prices are insane. The fact that those of us with the A9, we picked them up a year ago, and you're starting to see prices dip quite a bit. So I, I even, I even added it to my cart just for, just for sake. But I obviously didn't buy it. But um, yeah, Sony A9 for two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. That leaves me the question: What if the A9 was priced the same as the A7 III? Which one would you get, the A7 III or the A9? The A7 III or the A9? Which camera would you get if they were both $2,000? What would that be? All right. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the next one here. Man, we're almost done. This is great. I could finish early today. Take some questions. <laughs> he says, if there's one thing that Sony doesn't need to worry about, it's overheating. <laughs> Chris Barr is saying that's why I'm saying it's going to be an A6, A6R, A6S in the new bodies to save manufacturing money and battery. Dave Sincere says if it was between the A9 and the A7 III, if they were the same price, Dave Sincere would get, pick up the A9. 
<laughs> um, I'm the Brown saying that the A9 price is bogus. I checked all over and then there was nothing below 3,500. Yeah, it wasn't a price that was like, um, it was just one of those off prices that just was there for a short period of time. Um, but yeah, that's, but it's still crazy. I mean, a thousand dollars from retail, I know they're, they'd be technically refurbished or recertified, but it's crazy how the prices are dipping on those. Neo God says I'd get the A9 if they were the same price. Michael again, re reassuring it's a refurbished A9. Yes, it is refurbished, not brand new. <laughs> Fathom Rocker says you just get both, <laughs> get both of them. Um, Kyle Markham, Mark Hamp says, I would get the A7 Mark III, but if I did just photos, I would get the Sony A9. That's what's really tough. You get a little more flexibility with the A7 Mark III if you're going to use like S-Log, for example, because you don't get that in the A9. Um, there's, a, there's some other things missing with the A9. You don't get the nice rate button feature. So when you want to star your images, you don't get that in the A9. You just get the protect option. <laughs> Oscar Acevedo says, this is above my pay grade level. I'm still in diapers with the A6000 and the 35 F1.8. Hey, man, you, you just got to do what you got to do, man. Um, Chris Barr, A7 Mark III for the fast manual shutter. That is true. You get a manual shutter, 10 frames per second, right? Or am I, am I right on that? Or is it 8 frames per second on that one? I don't remember anymore. It's been a while. The A not, the A uh, the A7 Mark III has taken a long while to uh, to reach here. <laughs> Dave Sincere says, if I had to choose between the A9 or the A7 Mark III, I would get the A6000. <laughs> Dee's uh, going on along with the idea of getting a larger body on the Alpha 6700. It would make sense. Um. Evan Pollinger is asking about Sigma mount conversions for FE lenses. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'm very interested about that. I don't know if it was David Oster last time that mentioned pricing on that. It was like around $200, 2 to $300. But as far as when they're doing it, I don't know yet. <laughs> Neil Pelt, Peltec, thank you for the $5 donation. He says, just wanted to say thanks for a great show. Thank you for the super chat, Neil. Really appreciate it, man. Damon Hart purchased said he purchased a 90 millimeter 2.8 macro from Amazon and it came and the focus ring didn't work and I couldn't change the aperture, I had to send it back. Yeah, I I mean, that's the pros and cons with Amazon. At least you can still send those things back if you buy it through them. Um, but that is a scare. Yeah, if, if, especially if you're dropping that kind of money for that lens. All right, man, we're going to go ahead and just knock out a couple more of these news topics. And we'll take Q&A and then I'll do the show for this evening. Um, again, if you're just cutting in right now, show notes will be posted after the show. So this next one was posted on Petapixel. It was an article. I want to say necessarily a whole article, but just a post about your dominant eye. So, and it had to do with this thing about when you put your eye to the viewfinder, which eye do you usually go with? Is it your left eye or your right eye? Which one is the most dominant one that you do, uh, that you tend to use? For me personally, I use my left eye. That's my dominant eye. And it kind of bothers me because when I was shooting with DSLRs, for example, when I was shoot, right? And I don't know who else is. Actually, let me know if you, what eye do you, what's, what's your dominant eye? Are you, do you put your eye with your right eye or you use your left eye? But when I shoot sports and I'm using my left eye, sometimes I like to be able to sort of see what's going on around me. So, but if I have to put my left eye into here, my field of view is like blocked, like the body of the camera sort of blocks it. Now I'll use my right eye, but my right eye isn't as good as my left. I mean, it's slightly, it's, it's not as good. My left eye is a bit sharper. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so it's a lot easier for me to use my left eye. I'll use my right eye very sparingly, but sometimes I'll do my, I'll use my right eye. But if, if I have my right eye usage, again, it'll look a little blurry but it actually frees my field of view. So if I'm shooting sports, maybe like baseball or something, I can at least see what the heck is going on in front of me because it can get a, you know, it can get alarming if you can't tell. But some really cool things too. And I, I really don't know if, if you've also transitioned that way. I know some of you guys hybrid shoot a lot and you're using Sony Mirrorless cameras now. 
is how much more often do you just use the back LCD screen on your camera? I, I use it a lot more than I've ever done before in the past. I just flip out the screen. I can shoot at a lower angle, shoot at higher angles if I need to. Just things I, I never typically did with my DSLR for obvious reasons because you couldn't shoot with the back screen. But I use it a lot more and those issues I used to have where I couldn't see my field of view and I couldn't tell where in the world was going on, it became less and less of an issue for me at certain times. So just wondering, you know, what I is dominant for you? Uh, do you have any issues with that? And are you using the back of the screen of your Sony mirrorless cameras a lot more than maybe if you were a, your past DSLR, being a past DSLR shooter? So, but yeah, that was the whole thing with the dominant, I think. They give a test. It's like some weird thing where you, let's see, let me pull it up here. It's like, um, if you want to find out what your dominant eye is, I mean, I would imagine most of you, whatever eye you put into your viewfinder is your dominant eye, the one that you like have a bigger preference for. But they say you got to do this. So you make this little triangle and you position it and you just kind of close your eye left and right and see which one is your regular point of view. And that will usually tell you which one is your dominant eye. So. Holy smokes, Alex Sandoval just dropped $20. Thank you, Alex Sandoval, for uh, <laughs> for the drop there. Uh, he says, thanks for doing a live, even if you're alone. By the way, what is your thoughts on anamorphic lenses? Are there any for Sony Alpha cameras, great cinematography with them? Did I see a post about cinema, uh, anamorphic lenses for phones now? I think it was posted on Cinema 5D, I think, that they might be using anamorphic lenses. I I don't know a whole lot about um, anamorphic, unfortunately, Alex. Um, but I wonder if there's anybody in the, the comments that have used it. I, I really dig the effect that they do. I'm, I'm guessing folks who, who have like the GH5, for example, might take advantage of the anamorphic options that that camera gets. But um, no, I have personally have not. All right, so let's check it out here. Um, Michael Maestro, hashtag no more gear. <laughs> uh, Kyle Markham uh, says they will be able to do the mount conversion only on lenses that will have an E-mount counterpart. I, thanks for that, Kyle, for uh, confirming that. That just takes a lot of questions out there. <laughs> Fathom Rocker says, I use my left eye. The funny part is my left eye is my worst. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, now I don't now I don't even know anymore. I figured that your best eye, your eye that has the best acuity or just best um your ability to see would be your your dominant eye we'd put, but apparently Phantom Rocker's using his bad eye. <laughs> but he says, thank goodness for autofocus. Yes, I agree. It's a big deal. David Elser, back screen nearly all the time. Yeah, I I feel like I'm cheating all the time using the back screen, but it's just so normal now with with the with the Sony mirrorless stuff. Evan Poland just following up on the lenses. Uh, he said, as far as fast zooms go, it should be possible to miniaturize the Sigma twenty four thirty five f two because it has a short flange distance. D says, my right eye but my glasses get in the way regardless. That must really suck sometimes. Um, Michael says, uh, I use my bifocals. They're more dominant than both my eyes. <laughs> Rich King says, I use my left eye now. My right eye has developed astigmatism, so it's blurry nowadays. Ouch. John Louis Imperial, I use my left eye even though it has a higher grade than my right eye. <laughs> Jay San said, be like Jason Lanier and use both of your eyes. David Hart says, Jason Lanier uses the back screen with one hand while wearing a fedora. So you just need to get a fedora and you're all set to go. All right. I think we just got one more news topic to go uh, and that's it. And then um, I can talk about the uh, Sony A7 over overheating thing, but 
So uh, there's this post. Um, I just it just was on Nikon Rumors. I check out Nikon, Nikon Rumors every now and then. Um, but it's from a Nikkei article. It's a Japanese site. Uh, wh what looks as if Canon and Nikon have actually are looking to make their announcements on their full frame mirrorless cameras a lot sooner than they originally expected it to. So I guess what happened is the sudden large interest and burst of interest for mirrorless cameras. And I think the a7 III, the a7R III, those are some really big pushes towards uh, full frame mirrorless that it looks as if Nikon and Canon are now looking to make an announcement on their full frame cameras in 2018 versus 2019. So I think what probably was gonna happen, they were gonna make an announcement in 2019 and then potentially see a release in 2020, but that's just a big giant guess. Um, my overall thoughts on this is that whenever there's competition, I'm all for it. I um, I think it's always a good thing. Definitely Canon is still trying to catch up. They're, I, I don't really know uh, if they're going to be able to make something that competes, but you know, these are some big juggernauts, Canon and Nikon. Um, if they can offer something near the quality that we can get from an A7 Mark III, but I doubt it, but who knows? Um, very interested to see what happens if 2019 ends up being the time that we see a lot of full frame mirrorless cameras from all these juggernauts kind of go at it. I think we're all gonna win in the end. Um, I know there's gonna be a lot of brand wars later with everybody uh, as far as what brand they like the most, but I think if there's more competition, it's always gonna be a good thing. I'm just hoping, if I was still with Canon, as far as a mirrorless full frame camera, and I don't know if those of you still have DSLRs, but honestly, I would prefer like a full frame, like a 5D body, or even like a 6D Mark II body with a fully articulating screen, that's mirrorless. It's, um, those cameras are pretty light already, but if they could keep the, the current lens lineup, let's say for example, they can build the body and still use the EF mount, I, I think that'd be great instead of having to build a completely new mount system for that full frame system because it would just be really awkward, right? So um, I'm really hoping and uh, you know hoping Nikon and Canon come out with something. I, I would personally like them to kind of maybe offer something that Sony doesn't and knock Sony down just a peg, you know. That way Sony can react and and, and come back stronger with, from that because if Sony doesn't really have any competition, are they going to try and innovate over and over and over again? So um, hopefully this is Sony's push to help Nike, uh, Nikon and Canon innovate and actually put some really great features in their cameras. So, but yeah, that's that's the last news topic I was going to cover this evening. So I don't know your thoughts on it, but right now we are in the Q and A phase. So uh, if you still have any questions or lingering questions you want to ask, uh, go ahead and feel free to drop them in the chat, and we'll take a look at them. David Oster says he uses his third eye. Awesome. <laughs> Eli Mele says, I can't even close one of my eyes unless I close both at the same time. Oh, shoot. Neil Peltak is saying, about this whole situation about the Canon and Nikon mirrorless stuff. It's that it's not so much about mirrorless, he says, but it's more about adding new and better tech to the camera like Sony has. I, th I think that's kind of, that's a good point. And I, and I think that's the reason why a lot of people kind of rub the 6D Mark II the wrong way, especially because they have like 4K option. Um, or they're just kind of held back on a lot of features you just scratch your head about, really. Um, Evan Pollinger is asking, have you heard about the Zen Zenit camera coming out? I saw a post about it. Is that like the SL2? Like, a, is, that what, is that the chunkier mirrorless camera that they're talking about? David Oster says, Canon and Nikon can't rush this development cycle or they will stuff it up. You never know. It could be some <clears throat> oil issues on the Nikon cameras, right? Brian Nguyen just purchased an Alpha 6300 and made a video the next day. Need a stabilizer, though. <laughs> Brian Nguyen, Zuyun Crane 2, any alternatives? Dang it, Brian. Jason Vong is a really great person to ask on that. Maybe someone in the comments can help you with that. I do have the Zuyun Crane. 
is it the two that I have? I don't know. I have one of them. Cal Markham's asking, Markham's asking, am I going to go to NAB? I had plans to go to NAB, um, but I kind of didn't go decide to go because I just have stuff I had to take care of at work. Um, yeah, there's just there's just like there's just like task I gotta take care of, task I gotta take care of, and it really sucks because because I handle like a lot of the media stuff at school. So if I'm not there, everything kind of slows down in a certain way, and yeah, it's just, and I've got some on, on the trip that I got to get ready for for my students too. So that's what's going on. I I wish I could go. Lucky never says I think Canon may focus on the 90D rather than mirrorless now though. Yeah, I've been wondering about that 90D. I've been I haven't seen any like actual specifications pop up um uh, like Canon rumors or something about that. Panasonic, will they increase the sensor size? Do they need to for videography? I really, you know, as far as the sensor size, I I think they're kind of where they're at. I mean, they're, they have their lens lineup is is meant for micro four thirds. I don't know about. Well, they they do have a super thirty five video uh film camera though, like a cinema camera, right? So I think they already have a camera that's a bigger sensor, and it's an EF mount, I believe. Eli Malay says I dropped my old sixteen to fifty kit lens, and it came off its track tracks inside. I need to fix it myself, but I ended up just taking it apart even more. Do you think it is worth anything for parts? And maybe it's it's a really inexpensive lens when it's sold kind of on its own. <laughs> Alex Q and A, what are your thoughts on the Nasdaq dropping seven hundred points today? Our four hundred one k suffering right now. Well, I I just hope it goes up and down and goes up up up. Pedro Baltazar, Canon's lack of features is one of the reasons why I stayed with Sony. Yeah. I, Sony just, for all the issues with the overheating thing uh, that I dealt with, it's because that they still, the hybrid side of that camera was still very good compared to what Canon was offering at the time. So that's why I really liked it. Paul Donald is asking, APS-C Sigma 31.4 or the Sony 35 1.8 best for photos? I would go with the Sigma 31.4, depending on which APS-C camera you have. If you have the 6500, the Sigma 31.4 might be a better choice. If you don't have stabilization in your APS-C camera, I would push you towards the Sony 35. But you're talking specifically for photos. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I would say the, I would say Sigma 31.4. Uh, V3Z is asking, is there a real difference between 95 megabytes and 300 megabyte SD cards for 4K video? Um, well, with the Sony mirrorless cameras, as long as you have like a UHS-1 card that does that writes 95 megabytes per second, you're going to be fine. Uh, you'll record 4K with the Sony cameras. The 300 megabytes, if it's 300 megabytes per second for like the UHS-2 cards, the biggest benefits you're going to get out of those is not actually for 4K video, but it's it's to bu to write the buffer off of the camera, right? If you're taking a bunch of photos, and also your transfer speeds onto an SSD on your laptop or computer. So if you have an SSD in your computer and you're transferring files, and you have a like a UHS to card transfer speed, you can sort of saturate the USB 3.0 uh, hub, and, and get really good transfer speeds that way. Have a safe trip, <laughs> photo me, Ike. So he's in uh, San Jose right now, heading back home. <laughs> David Oster's just having lunch right now. Alex Sandoval, can you recommend other Sony Alpha camera YouTubers you watch? <laughs> well, we got photo me, Ike, in the house. We got David Oster. Tag Shooter does some videos every now and then. Who else is in the house that's doing videos? Um, 
to be perfectly honest with you, Alex, it's, um, uh, I, I don't watch too many like Sony, Sony videos too, too, like too often. Um, it just has to do with time for me right now. Um, usually when I'm like, I have a lot of extra time, I'll start, start watching like backlogs of people's videos that I haven't had a chance to check out in a while. Um, but right now it's just like, I just have to like bide my time. But as far as like other reviewers, what I've been watching, you know, what I'm looking at is like learning how to edit better in like Premiere, like uh, transitions and doing all that stuff like music video type stuff. So yeah, that's what I've been looking at lately. Matthew Harder says, my sensor is really dirty and I'm on a tight budget. Should I buy a sensor cleaning kit ASAP or wait? How urgent is cleaning your sensor? Uh, as if you're shooting, I mean, if you're shooting at like, like those narrow apertures, like at F8, F16, yeah, you're definitely going to want to clean that sensor. Um, if not, if you're shooting wide open, you're not going to worry about it any like right away, unless you can already see it in your actual like um, screen. But ha I know if you're worried about budget, I know Sony does free, I don't know your area, um, but Sony does always free cleanings whenever they have like an event. But if that's the case, then definitely look at a cleaning kit. Just make sure you get the right kind. I've never done a cleaning on my own Sony sensor. I just, so definitely check out some videos on that. Unless someone in the chat can chime in on cleaning their own sensors. Oscar Acevedo says, going on a trip to Spain, Italy. By the way, folks, if you're just jumping in right now, we've already just finished going over the news topics. Uh, we're in the Q&A section and just kind of hanging out with the chat for the next 10, 15 minutes or so before the end of the show. So, again, just really glad um, for those of you that are here uh, joining us on the Monday Live. So, again, Oscar Acevedo is asking, going on the trip to Spain slash Italy in two weeks. He's asking about uh, the 35 one is my only lens. Is that an all-around lens? Uh, it's not. I mean, you obviously may want something with more telephoto reach. 35 is a nice place to start with. Um, you may want a zoom lens or something like that. Maybe, you know, I, I, I don't know. It just depends on what, what kind of stuff you're going to shoot. Maybe that uh, 18105 or 18135 might be a good one to check out. <laughs> Net Net says, just got my just got my A6000 last week. I've been watching a lot of your videos before, which is a great help. Thank you. I I, I am going to have some more videos. APS-C isn't dead. I know I joke about that a lot, but uh, there's a lot of folks who still have APS-C cameras. So uh, when when the time comes around, I've got free time. I'll I'll get back to those videos. Photo Mia, I said he was in San Francisco droning, looking to put together an aerial short film. Nice. Chris Barr says, a small bribe to bring back more backyard geometry <laughs> reviews this summer. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, I, I've been looking at potentially maybe like, like, um, moving to try and get better internet so we'll see how what the hell happens with that but um <laughs> bring back back here to you. <laughs> you never know man just got just got to get rid of the all the weeds that grew from because we had some from rains benny lee's asking did you have a haircut yes david ulster says real men use final cut by the way, David Oster, I actually purchased Final Cut Pro. I actually purchased the the Pro bundles. I have um, I have a I have a Mac here. You know, there's a Mac right there. Um, I'm gonna try it out. So I got the Pro app bundles, the EDU. So for two hundred dollars, I got Final Cut Pro X and with all the other bundled software on it. So um, when summer kind of comes around, I'm gonna go ahead and and try using Final Cut a bit more. Jason's asking, will the Sony a7 III need more sensor cleaning? Yeah, I find that it gets dirty really fast. And I, I change my lenses out on the field. I, it's, a, it's such a pain. 
because sometimes, you know, I'm on the field, could be dusty. And then I'll even sometimes I'll, I'll set my camera like, God, there's dust already going in, but I'll have it like this sometimes. And then a swoop of air comes by <laughs> just like that. Um, dust falls right in. <laughs> Kyle Markham says, dropped 199. This is just because this show is awesome. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it. And uh, going to try to keep this Monday Live going for as long as I can. <laughs> well, in terms of just the shows itself, not the time on it. Yeah, uh, definitely use a rocket blower, as D is mentioning there. That's a good one to start with. <laughs> Let's see. A lot more than I did. V3Z is asking, I don't know rather to pre-order the Sigma 50 1.4 art or buy the Zeiss 55 1.8 for my A7 Mark III. They're around the same price. I really like the 55 uh, 1.8 from Zeiss. It's really sharp and it's light. It's a very light lens, very compact. The 50 1.4 art, I could swear it's it's a bit heavier, right? It's a little bit chunkier. Um, I don't know if you're going to get a lot more out of it. But at least with the Zeiss, it's a native lens. You're you're getting a lot, you know very good performance out of it. Unless you're going to get like a an FE version of that Sigma. So, but again, that's just my opinion. I don't own the I don't own the fifty one point four Art. Alex Enel is asking, how do you come up with ideas for videos? I feel like I would be in a rut. I wouldn't know what to do. So like I started like writing ideas in a notebook. Um, when I got really serious one time when I was actually doing, when I was doing a, like a video per day, what I did was I went through every single YouTube video that I had. And then I just went to the comment section. People always ask questions in the comment section. And that's where I generate a lot of ideas or I, uh, plans for videos. So if someone says, Hey, does the third party battery grip from Mickey work really well on the A9? Okay, well, that could be converted into a video later on. So it's just things that people mention in the comments or uh, questions. I get I get direct messages sometimes if I do get to them. Um, but yeah, I, it's just questions that people have and I just write them down as notes and convert them into a video. Matthew's asking, have you ever tried astrophotography before? Really looking into it, would love some advice. No, Matthew, I have not. Would love to, though. Would love to try astrophotography. It's going to be one of my goals. <laughs> Mitch Rico says, LMAO, moving just for the internet. I know, right? <laughs> um, Arif Khan saying, sitting around, bored, waiting for my A7 Mark III. Ended up buying an old canning glass on the chain. Alex Sandoval says, move out to Bakersfield, probably better in and out there. Yeah, that's kind of where I was looking at. <laughs> Photo of me, X responding to a comment from Froggy first. He's saying, uh, if you don't, or Froggy, so if you don't see me posting for a long time, this means the drone mafia <laughs> or the FA copy. <laughs> oh, shoot. Adam... Eunice says, what is the best vlog lens for the Alpha 6300? I really like the, the 10 to 18. The Sony 10 to 18 is a really good one for that. That's my that's my go-to. But there's the Sigma 16 1.4. That's another good one. Uh Neil Peltax asking what microphone I'm using. It's the Rode NT USB. That's what I'm using. Uh, Arif Khan's asking, I have the 2470 G Master and love the IQ. Is the IQ on the 35 F 2.8 just as good? I don't own the F 2.8 G Master and I don't own the Sony Zeiss 35 2.8. I own the Rokinon 35 2.8. Uh, I know David Oster really likes his. I think he has it, uh, the the Sony one. But I could do a test later on with the Sony and the Rokinon. Uh, I'll just do a rental out for it and do a test. 
Michael's asking, when's the next time you're coming down to LA? You know, I'm hoping over the summer I can come down a little bit more often down to LA, maybe do some more collaborative videos with Jason down there before he gets too big time for everybody. You know what I mean? So, but hopefully, um, yeah, during the summer. Chris Barson, 10 to 18 needs to come down on price. I agree if they can. I, if they can bring it down to like 500, I think that'd be great. The Sony 12 to 24 is really nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> Pedro Balthazar, any, Danny, any thought in doing a meetup during the summer? Where are you at, Pedro? Like what area? What area are you in? David Elser loves a 16 to 35 f4. I do too. Really digging that lens. Man, we have made it to the end of questions, folks. I'm going to hang out for another five minutes or so, but if you have anything else you want to chime in, um, let me know. Pedro's in Riverside. Um, Mankaido saying, what's the chances you'd ever make it to the western side of Canada? I'd love to do a meetup and show you some areas. Um, hey, I'm not... If it ever happens, I, I mean, I'll I'll make a post about it on YouTube or something. I'm going to go down to to Canada, definitely to check in with Zed Pro Media out there too. So, Benny Lee, LA meetup question mark. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably just double it up with Jason to get you know enough people to go. <laughs> so, but usually the Sony has events that happen in like the LA area, um, and I usually use that as an opportunity to kind of piggyback on those. So if you're going to go to a Sony event, I'll usually go out to those if I can. And then we can chit chat, meet up there too. <laughs> Jay Sen says, I just realized, does this live stream have a name? If it doesn't, let's all come up with one. You know, it's weird. A lot of podcasts that I've watched, they usually come up with the show, the show title after the show, after they do their live. But since we have to, since I have to post the event ahead of time, I have to come up with a title ahead. So, um, <laughs> but yeah. Ben People says, would love to do a photo walk with you in LA. Yeah, we just gotta make sure either we have a model to work with if we're gonna do a photo walk. I know um, for those of you that were, that followed me and Jason Vaughn. We had done a meetup when we were in New York. It was just a meetup. <laughs> but since I think Francisco, Francisco Joel Hernandez, it was joining us. Um, a lot of the folks thought we were doing a photo shoot. And I don't know if anybody's in the chat though that had gone there. So I felt really bad because it was just supposed to be a meetup just to hang out. And uh, they all thought we were going to have a model uh, with us that day. But um, but Francisco. Uh, I think it was hit up Boris, Boris, and uh, you were able to get a model out there. But <laughs> yeah, for sure, of course. I mean, I really love just like teaching more, more anything else. If people have questions about something or they're trying to learn how to do something, that's kind of where I would where like to be at, especially with the Sony stuff. Alex says, I've done a lot of astrophoto photography, so I got that thing down. So I need to meet up with Alex and develop some time and do some astrophotography. <laughs> photo of me like says at uh, it says invite me and i can get us a model easy <laughs> all right i'll keep that in mind <laughs> pedro balthazar hashtag uh name april fools with potatoes <laughs> let's see here man alex sandoval dropping some really great places go to canada go to the banff in the summer the canadian rockies are beautiful then also montana in the summer is perfect Jay Santa says, I'd rather buy you guys beer and talk about APSC. Yeah, man, we can talk about all the other Sony stuff that I never talk about on the show. So uh, <laughs> if you want to meet up and hear the other side of the stories, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I... Oh, so let me talk about the overheating thing with the A7 III. I, I know I kind of held back on my talk about that um, uh, last week, but 
I think we're going to see uh, potentially more issues. My honest opinion is I think there's going to be more issues with the a7 III uh, when that camera's out. And I think that was the reason why we're saying, you know, definitely be cautious about this camera. Uh, get it from a, a retailer you trust. If there's any issues, send it back. Um, avoid going to the route of like sending it in for repair. Uh, Cause I don't think Sony has like an actual repair facility. I think it's going to be through another company like precision repair, depending on where your country is. But the A9, you know, for whatever it is, you know, whether you believe me or not at this point, I know there's a lot of people who for whatever reason just can't, can't accept that there was issues with the A9 with overheating and that there was heating issues with the other Sony mirrorless cameras. Um, but I think the a7 III is you're going to see it more only because there's going to be more people with this camera. It's such a really popular camera that I, 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 I personally hope it doesn't have a big issue. Like I think if it's a case of just a minimum amount of cameras that are affected, I would prefer that. Um, but my gut feeling tells me you're going to see more and more of those issues pop up quite frequently, especially since the camera's coming out. Well, I guess it just depends on where you're located in the world, but we're going to hit summertime here in the U S or wherever you are in ge geographically. So I, I don't think, I think it's going to be more predominant, but, I've kind of learned my lesson already in terms of sort of just the things you just got to deal with. You can't really shoot with the, with the Sony cameras and direct blistering heat. It's just, you got to cover, you got to cover it somehow with an umbrella or something like that. So, but that's what I'm, I'm thinking is, is going to go down. Let's see. Yeah. And then uh, another thing, uh, I don't think I'll get into too much detail, but just cause you guys are here joining me on this like loan loan stream here. But, um, um, yeah, there was actually a, a really high up person in, in Sony that actually, uh, wasn't too happy with me, uh, especially with the, the Sony a nine overheating and yeah, but that's a story for some other time. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can tell you in person someday, but yeah, it was a very interesting moment. Matthew Harder, are you asking any time chance you would come down to Chicago? You know what? To be perfectly honest with you, I have some really um, big plans to travel a little bit more, check different places out, um, taking the, like taking the stuff that I'm doing now a little more seriously. This last year has kind of been a slow for me, but if I can kind of like navigate my responsibilities at my main job and then kind of, kind of micromanage everything as well as I can, um, I'm looking to do that more, to travel out more. So, um, would love to, to check out, uh, check out a lot of different places. <laughs> Chris Barr says a 6,500 ever overheats in the sun. When I tested the a 6,500, that thing is a monster. That thing is actually really good for, uh, for outdoors when it comes to overheating. My a 6,300 had more issues though. The 6,500 was actually pretty damn good. Uh, I remember when I did a test on it the 6500 kept going in, in blistering heat so but this, but uh but yeah the 6500 is pretty darn good <laughs> mitch rica says i wish i could buy a zeiss 16 to 35 with my tax return <laughs> gonna buy my white botox touch up instead <laughs> uh majestec says my 6500 overheats after 20 minutes when i shoot in a freezing basement god D says Sony overheating has become the red ring of death from the first gen Xbox 360. Yeah. Yeah. Alex Sandoval says travel Danny. It's one, um, my accident was one of my favorite places in the world. Definitely, definitely want to do that more. Yeah, uh, photo me X chiming in with this Panasonic G eighty five never overheats recording four K. Yeah, that thing's a monster. It's a tank. Uh, when I had the G H four, never overheated four K. So I hopefully Sony can figure that out. <laughs> Froggy first is asking, go ahead and leave your camera in the outback and let us know if it overheats. <laughs> But it makes us, I agree, Danny and Jason should do a world tour. <laughs> so I've met, I met photo me, I already, but it was very, very intermittent though. Um, 
still need to meet some of you guys out there. I got to fly down across the ocean to meet David Osler. <laughs> Chris Barr, aren't you like towards the Midwest or East? Where are you at? I forgot. I, or, or were you trying to meet up with us in New York? I forgot. <laughs> David Osler says, I did test it out in my backyard and shut down after 26 minutes shooting in 4K. Mitch Rico says, come to Austin, Texas. Hey, if I ever stop by to go visit Francisco, maybe I'll come down there. Matthew Harder is asking, do you think any budget lens will come out very soon for Sony E-mount under 500 bucks? Yeah, we just have to wait for third party. Sigma, Tamron. That's where it's going to be at. So Chris Barr's in the East Coast. Okay. And photo me acts from Richmond. <laughs> Alex is like, everyone just needs to come down to LA. We can all meet up in Venice. <laughs> oh, man. Just do, just do a live show. Man, I think that's going to do it, man. Anything else, guys, before we close out the show? Again, um, I'll get some show notes posted soon. And, uh, again, really appreciate you guys all joining uh, joining the live stream this evening. <laughs> RF Khan says, ice is melting up here in Canada. We'll be allowed out of our ig igloos soon. Come visit us. We'll go take pics in front of the Canada headquarters. <laughs> ben Elise, thanks for the fun show. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Oh, Trey Trav. How's Travy Trav? <laughs> thanks for coming by, man. Michael Mistro says, full frame sensor will overheat. It's much faster than the small micro four thirds sensor. Yeah. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining, joining the stream as usual. Uh, yeah, no problem. And hopefully I can start making some videos. I feel really bad. <laughs> it's the hard thing about YouTube. All right, folks, it's going to do it for me. Um, I'll catch you guys later, man. Hopefully uh, the next week we might even see an announcement. Who knows? NAB is coming around the corner. Maybe we might see an A7S three drop or launch. The next show should be on Jason Vong's channel, but I don't know for sure. I'll have to confirm with him. I'm not quite sure when he comes back from Mexico, but um, we'll figure it out and we'll see what happens. But with that said, guys, um, I'm here with that one camera guy, and I'll catch you on the next live show. Peace.